so as soon as we said it in a single tier, like we were just immediately hermanos. Yeah. You're so stupid, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> we never called each other by our government names, Marie. Except right no. now when I just said it to reemphasize that I just said it, we said with the government names. But on that note, welcome back to Not a Strong Start, <laughs> a podcast by filmmakers who talk movies, television, and never, never call each other by our government names. I am your host, Freaky Dan Day. I am not your host, Make a Wish. And I am Carl. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> Carl, how do you do a, a cowboy accent? First thing that popped in my head was Carl Jr. Was yeah, like, that's oh, what man. I thought. I can't really go for a burger right now. I, I like how Marie says, says Marie's like, wait, how does that redneck say it? And Mino's hair, like, I don't know. I don't think we're the target audience. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about reboot television shows or movies. Some of us saw, some of us went television shows, some of us went movies. But let's kind of, uh, first, we're going to hit you with the Kearney bag. This was announced back at the end of last year, but nothing was solidified. But it looks like it's now for sure going to happen. And um, Bloomhouse and James Wan, this company, Atomic Monster, are actually close to finishing up a deal, uh, a collaboration deal, where they'll be joining together and collaborating on projects, future projects going forward. Hmm. Um, now, they've worked before, uh, you know, on like Insidious. Um, I believe they worked together on Megan. So they've done projects uh, together before, and it's been a successful relationship between them when they have worked together uh so they're, they're looking to do more movies together and I, I think they even mentioned about possibly uh doing some video game adaptations uh that are horror and bringing those onto the screen and they like james wan's doing right now with um no and bloom house is doing right now with uh five nights at freddy's well james wan for me has kind of been started up here and he's kind of like taking like an M. Night Shyamalan thing where it's like started from the top and now it's kind of like going down for me. We also call that the Drake. Um, started from the bottom, now we're here, but it's the opposite. Yeah. yeah, That's what I was thinking in my head and I'm like, how do I word this? That's but, the yeah, Blake. Thank you. That's the Blake. You read my <laughs> mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Blake. <laughs> um, and Bloomhouse, Bloomhouse, right? Not Blumhouse. Some people say Blumhouse, people say Bloomhouse. What is it? Bloomhouse. Really? Who cares? Bloomhouse. Okay. Um, Bloomhouse for me, like I, of course, there's bad blood between me and Bloomhouse a little bit. So what? Why? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, for me, they're both like have gone like this. So maybe they're going to like start from the bottom. Then they're here. That's right. Right. Maybe they're going to connect. Now they're going to Drake it. Slide, <laughs> and they're going to Drake it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so maybe we'll see. But video game adaptations, I'm down for if they're done. Okay. So the trailer for the Five Nights of Freddy looks really dumb. <laughs> it's like I, I have no interest in watching that. And it, I've seen the movie already, but starring Nicolas Cage. Like that's, 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 I don't know what it looks like. But I know it's based off of a video game. So I don't know what other games that they have. I don't think the video games are the only thing that they're going to target. Um, okay. I've never played Five Nights at Freddy. So, uh, so yeah. I don't really know much about it. So the trailer really didn't attract me i'm not the demographic for that but i have spoken to people who have played the game and were excited by the trailer i guess it kind of fits in with the vision that they were seeing for the movie um mm. so it has a target audience regarding this uh partnership again it's gone well when they've collaborated before and i believe they did collaborate on megan which i felt uh, was was actually pretty good. It was decent. Was it amazing? No, but it actually was uh, entertaining. So we'll see. I don't, I don't mind them being together. Anything that can possibly give us good horror movies, I'm always going to be down for and always going to mm -hmm. give a chance to because we don't get it often. We're in one of those low periods when it comes to horror, uh, you know, waiting for the next peak where horror blows up for a couple of years. So we will see. Yeah. But it's because of Bloomhouse that we're in a low point in horror. So we'll see. True. But <laughs> we'll A24 has done pretty good things. So I'm hoping they champion us with it. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah. They Marie gotta prove themselves. <laughs> Marie well, doesn't prove. No, they no, they, everyone deserves a chance. So we'll see if they can prove themselves. If they can't, yeah. then cut. Yeah. Well, they're at least trying to do something. 
they're at least trying to be like, you know what, we're going to stick. So we're going to put out some horror material. And I, I can re- I can respect that. All right. Let's get into <laughs> our main topic. So TV shows, movies that should be rebooted and maybe some that shouldn't be. So what are reasons why you guys think something should be rebooted? Hit us, Marie. Let's go first. As a rule, I usually don't like to see things rebooted, but um, I say that when my favorite horror movie is a rebooted thing. But the only how do I word this? If there's already something like a movie that is based on a TV show or a book or another movie or it's a continuation of a movie and they reboot it and they do it poorly and they don't stick to like um like it's true essence you know and they don't enhance it in any way and they like you know make you like why'd you do that then that should be rebooted i don't know if i'm gonna be talking about one of those today maybe we'll see but um yeah that to me too is that they totally like have disregard for like the beauty of the original content and they f it up just as like a money grab then we're we talking about then we should reboot those. Sorry, I got confused. <laughs> got it. <laughs> then we should re- we should reboot reboots reboot that have been rebooted badly should be rebooted. Thank you. Yes. Reboot the so reboots. The, so <laughs> so the double boot it. That's when you yeah. <laughs> is that when he tooted and booted? That's when he tooted and booted. Oh double my god, boots. that was hard yeah. for hard like they, they, spit out. They really didn't pay their ticket, so you gotta throw two boots on there. Double boot it. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. Marie should do a reboot of the explanation as she <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, Jose, let's i'm trying go. to think about how you're doing uh i i feel that there's a there's a few reasons uh that can justify a reboot uh one is if it's been a very long period of time uh to the point where there's a whole new generation of like new uh movie viewers who maybe haven't watched or don't watch those old stuff maybe you that's a good time maybe to do a reboot right say you know 30 years have passed since like the original one or something like that. That that might be a good situation of doing a reboot. Um, another situation of doing a reboot is if the original movie had high potential but fell short. So it was just like, oh, that could have been really good, but it failed. So then no one watched it. No one paid attention to it. It got lost. It's like that might be a good movie to reboot and actually make good because the pieces are there. Uh, and then the last one is sometimes maybe modernizing a movie that no longer holds up. That might be a good time, whether it doesn't hold up because those uh, those concepts or or whatever themes it has are no longer applicable, or maybe just uh, uh you know maybe like for example eighties movies that can be overly cheesy, which I enjoy. Uh, but sometimes it's too much and it just does not hold up anymore as an adult. So it's like, okay, maybe you can reboot that one. So those are some of the reasons I think are justified to be rebooted, remade, or reimagined. Yeah, good point. Um, I, I think it's a lot of that. So not to kind of rehash what you guys are saying, but if you have a premise that kind of failed somewhere, or sometimes you have a movie that was pretty good, but maybe they casted the lead that wasn't great. And they kind of made some cheesy moments in it where he kind of fumbled the bag a little bit, didn't quite stick the landing. That's usually good and primed. Or if you have like some kind of nugget of there of of genius that you can kind of exploit and turn into something else. Sometimes you can even take a project that maybe was like a comedy and you kind of redo it as like a drama. I've seen something like that. Or they've taken dramatic movies and they make them comedies. You can always do things like that. I never I hate it. When they reboot a classic that was already a 10 out of 10. So like when they try doing it like with Psycho, you know, or they even did it with The Shining when they had The Shining. I know they made the made for TV movie, but the best you can ever accomplish is trying to match what they did. Other than that, everything else is a failure. Those should never be touched. Like we never need to see a Clockwork Orange remade. It was perfect for what it was. Leave it. There's no there's nothing new I can get out of this. Leave it as is. But For the most part, there's a lot of good projects out there. Um, Being a writer, I would really wish that they would just pick all original content, you know, but that's just me. You know, of course, studios won't go with that, but there's a lot of good prime projects that that they can do and they can touch and reboot. So I was going to say like some classics, like I don't think like Daniel says, like 
most of the classics shouldn't be touched. And I know you can like modernize movies, but there's some movies where the aesthetic of the era it was made in, that's what makes it so good. And modernizing it would just be terrible. Like my my example I've written down here is Black Christmas was so good because it had that, it's like 70s-ish, 80, 60, mm-hmm. 70s, is it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But just that yeah. aesthetic with the with the like the dorm and everything like that. Like you do it with like nowadays or like I know there's been like two other ones. Um, and it's just like it just cheeses it and brings it down. And it's just I I don't know. Some things need to stay in that air. Like Clockwork Orange is another good um example. Definitely. And and psycho, like no. Don't touch them. Okay, so don't touch them. Yeah, don't touch them. Don't touch them. <laughs> Perfect. So let's get into some of the projects. So who wants to start us off? Hancock with mm. uh with Will Smith. Mm -hmm. Uh, here's a movie I felt had such promise and it started off so well, but it was ruined by a terrible, like third acts, uh, where it seems like two different movies from what it was in the third act and what it was in the first two acts. And I feel like this is a movie that could be rebooted because there's so much potential there. Like I feel if written differently and if some of those story aspects in the third act were changed, you can possibly like get a trilogy out of this and there was so much potential there for world and lore building behind the character and where the characters came from and it's just sometimes it's refreshing to see that type of movie where you have like this you know not stereotypical superhero but he's not part of the one of the big two he's not a marvel character he's not a dc character it's an original character and that can add something refreshing to, to what the scope that we have with these type of superhero movies, where a lot of the things, especially if you know you read comics or you see like those old cartoons, you already know some of the elements of these characters. There's no surprise to it if you know these characters. Hancock had the potential to give us that, and they messed it up at the end. So I feel that has a criteria for me that should get rebooted. I think I've only seen it once and I don't really remember much, but yes, I'm going to say, I agree, Jose. <laughs> yeah. Hancock was cool. It was a nice premise. Uh, it got really weird and funky in there, but you had Will Smith. You had Charlie Theron, great actors. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Other than that, they just <laughs> completely kind of didn't really deliver on that. So they should do that. I mean, like you said, it had an interesting premise. So I'd say a remade. Well, of course I would reboot the entire new star Wars trilogy. I know I've talked about this for so long in so many episodes but the thing about rebooting like I try to think about it like they actually can do it and it's just been such a long time they're also old and Carrie Fisher's passed away it's like how do they even do it anymore so first of all I think that I'm not a fan of the new trilogy (laughs) at all no I know um I think they did all of our um all of our heroes completely dirty and killed them in non-heroic ways and i just it hurts my heart and i think that what they should have done is since they have like the actual lore and the books of star wars already i don't understand why didn't why they didn't just take that and make movies off of those i just don't i it's there true fans like it do that because then they're kind of saying like that doesn't exist anymore and that lore that does exist doesn't exist we're throwing these new characters when really they could have a whole new complete series starting with like Han and Leia's kids uh Luke's kid and I think they should have did that instead because it would have been like you have parts of the old original characters still living on and you don't even need to show them you, they could be like passed away already, like in st- the Star Wars world, and just have like the story of their kids. And that way, you don't need to be like, oh, when are we going to see Leia? When are we going to see Luke? And it's like, no, no, no. They're fine. They live their lives. They're happy. And they died in peaceful ways. And now it's their kids' turn, but it's still part of them. So it still feels like Star Wars. I would love to see that. Um, you might, you could also reboot the prequels, but they, because they've done the spinoff with Rebels and all that stuff, they kind of salvaged it in a way, I guess. As best as they could have. The new ones, it's still primed to do that. I just know they just came out. So it's kind of hard for them to reboot something that just came out. But, I mean, they really, really butchered these characters with where they were going. So I love to see a reboot. Probably should have just left it alone. 
I mean, we yeah. we probably would not have gotten like you know Rogue One or like the Andor series or most of the Mandalorian series. So we've gotten some good stuff after that, but um, a lot more bad than we've gotten good. I honestly have no confidence that they were to reboot it that they would reboot it right. I feel Star Wars has gotten to the point that they're not going to satisfy people. The more projects <laughs> they do, they should just kind of let it let it go, let it breathe. It is what it is. There's a ton of Star Wars content out there. I don't think you need to do any more. Personally, I, I just have <laughs> no trust in what they're going to do going forward. I have no more excitement. I'll watch. I'll watch. I haven't like completely you know, cut out Star Wars out of my life, but the excitement just isn't there anymore for me, for the, the confidence in the quality. Yeah, that's a good Killed point. It. It's, Killed it's, it. yeah, it's, I have no confidence in them doing it ever since Disney took it over. Like it took something. Here's the thing you have stuff like Andor and Rogue One, stuff that's not connected to the main storyline. Rogue One is loose, but what I mean by that is you have characters that aren't connected to, to the main storyline. These movies are doing better. These projects are better. Just give us more of this. Like, if you want to do Star Wars, give us characters that aren't tied into the Skywalker legacy. Like, I'm so sick of the Skywalker legacy. Star Wars isn't Skywalker. It doesn't need to be Skywalker. Give us something else, please. Like, I was just talking to my brother about this where we're talking about the new ones. And it's like, oh, you know, Palpatine exists. How? We, we don't know. It's like, how did he survive like the whole cloning thing and all that it's so stupid it's so stupid just move on man come up with original ideas for the love of like, god like marie said there's so much uh source material and content available out uh, uh, there outside of the skywalker like mm -hmm. sa saga uh i don't know if i would be excited if they were to reboot more skywalker stuff and we already know yeah. we're getting another movie with ray skywalker so who knows where that's gonna go why yeah we don't need it so okay so yeah. i'm gonna go with the tv show so i've talked about the show before it had such a good premise very good first season really good second season and then just completely went somewhere else Is so <laughs> no what if I told you that I had a show where you have a plane crash that lands on an island oh, and you God. have these science fiction <laughs> type story that they're in and, you know, you're trying to figure out where you have like this monster living in the trees. And then what if I start turning in and make it more about religious and these people that are living? Like, it became so much something else. So I'm going with the show Lost. If you can reboot Lost and give me an actual cohesive story Something where the ending feels like what is going to be in the beginning. And for the love of God, stop asking questions that you have no intention of ever answering. Stop it with that. Like the whole Damon Lindelof, like this is where he became so synonymous, <laughs> which is asking a thousand questions and answering like seven of them. Like it became so annoying. But the premise was interesting. You have a pilot that was so good about these people that are surviving a plane crash. There's so much juicy content there in the show Lost, that if you were to reboot it, make it more grounded and not go so extraterrestrial with this kind of stuff, it would be so good. Make it less religious. Just make it feel worldly and it's happening there in our world. You mean that they actually had a plan like for it? Yes. And weren't just like winging it? Like <laughs> when I think of Lost, I think as in, hey, I'm told, hey, there is a treasure chest there in in that in that part of the ocean and you dive in to go to the treasure chest and at first it's like oh it's a hot day outside this is refreshing it feels kind of good out there swimming and you keep going then all of a sudden it's like all right, i'm getting a little tired i'm getting a little cold but whatever there's a treasure down there and then you finally get down there exhausted running out of air tired freezing and you open up the chest and someone's already got into it and there's nothing there that's what <laughs> lost is to, yeah. to or, <laughs> or it's like you open the chest and you're like oh but wait there's this chest over here but you can go with this chest but let's flash sideways at this chest and actually go backwards into this chest and you're like yeah. we're confused yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you really you really can tell that show that they have they had no clue how they were going to end it and i feel like so many people were like i 
I have seen Lost. Just to let, let you guys know. I know I haven't seen much. I've seen Lost like probably two or three times over. So <laughs> it doesn't age well, by the way. So good thing to reboot it because it does not age well. Um, when you watch it, you're like, okay, they they have no clue what they're doing. And I think so many people said, oh, it's, they're probably just in limbo. It's like a limbo thing. And I think they were like, oh shoot, we definitely shouldn't do as limbo. When it, when I think about it, I'm like, you know what? They should have. At least it would have made more sense if they were all in purgatory and they had to redeem themselves. I know you say stay away from the religious aspect, but I mean, it seemed like that's where they were going with it in the beginning. It, it's like the, so many people try to explain the ending like for the writers. Like yeah. It was yeah. obviously a crap out of Some people try to justify us for the ending and all I kept hearing was, oh, I ran into a doorknob. Like yeah. that's pretty much what I kept hearing with all the people just trying to make excuses for like that terrible ending yeah. that was in there. Yeah, that was bad. See, and that's when I say this is like a perfect example of why is because when people have watched it, they're emotional about their hatred for how it ended and how it fumbled, which means there was an emotional connection that we had to the project. It wasn't like, oh, yeah. oh, the trailer looked cool. And I started as soon as I started to watch it, it was like, eh, I lost interest. I lost interest. I thought the show was something else than it was. No, we were emotionally invested. And the messed up part is that you gave us two seasons of great television. The first mm -hmm. two seasons were awesome. And then three and yeah. four were just god awful. Like, what happened? Like, J.J. Abrams jumped ship and just started doing Star Trek or something like that. Like, he was gone. And I don't blame him. <laughs> It just reminds me of like the joke of like the the guy who goes to ask out the uh, the girl the woman who's like way above his league. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, you want to go out on a date? And she's like, yes. What do you want to do? And he's just like, I didn't think I would get this far. I don't know. That's pretty yeah. much what last one. Season yeah. two happened. They were like, I, we didn't think we would get this far. We have nothing. Let's just like make it up. Yeah, man. God, such wasted yeah. too. Because like John Locke was such a good character, and he just wasted oh, he's my absolute favorite and yeah what they did to his character and like his oh my god no that is so sad that is so yeah. sad yeah and like hurley hurley gets the island then like was it walt gets the island i'm gonna change my i'm gonna change my name to walt instead. Yeah, walt. there you go there you go yeah. perfect all right oh, man, i'm getting emotional now for my next one uh i'm gonna go with an old uh or uh Wishmaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I know they did multiple sweet goals and that stuff, but just really like the concept of it. You know, it was it, it made it different. Like one of the things I like about Freddie when we talk about like the big three is he's different than Michael Myers and he's you know different than Jason Voorhees. He's just he's not just this like big imposing you know entity that just you know grabs a weapon like kills with his hands and all that stuff uh he it it's there's a different aspect to it you know he's getting you in your dreams wishmaster was kind of like that there's a different element to to it you know uh it goes back into the lore and the mystique of like the gins going forward and he can't just whoever wakes him up wherever the protagonist is i think that the fact that you can't just go and kill the protagonist because then you can't make their final wish and he can't get what he wants. That adds an element that you don't get with these other movies where they can easily kill the protagonist. They just fail at doing it most of the time. They can do it with no issues. He really can't or he doesn't get what he wants. Um, but I feel the original movie, how old it is, is marred by... With very bad visuals. The technology of the time kind of really hold it back. And using the technology we have now, there's so much potential of what you could do uh, with it. And there's also a movie, it's kind of like the Final Destination, where after, you know, you're like, oh, I want to see the new creative way that they kill people and like the cool way to do You know, it's kind of like that with Wishmaster. It's like, okay, I want to see the next creative way that he turns a wish on someone. Uh, and I found that always entertaining. So, like, I would not mind a Wishmaster like comeback. I could see that. I remember watching it as a kid. I liked it, I think, <laughs> but I remember like <laughs> kind of quoting it with friends. I have not seen it since then. I that's why when I saw that you were posting that you were watching it, and I was like, yeah, like I need to go back and rewatch it. But <laughs> I'd watch a Wishmaster. 
we all love horror, man. Like, give me some reboots on a horror. Horror is usually that one where, unless if it's a masterpiece like a Shining, then which is a different type of horror that's more psychological horror. But for those type of horrors, like you can reboot those so many often, man. Like as long as they're great, you know, we we talked about it's hard when you have Robert England, who's such a great character for Freddy, that it's hard to reboot that. When you get a character like Wishmaster, it's more about the character than it is the actor and how they're portraying them. That's prime for a reboot. I haven't seen it, so. <laughs> Maybe you get on them, right? I agree. I agree. I agree, Jose. Reboot I it. wish <laughs> that you watch it. That's all I was going to say. Oh. <laughs> how are you, you going to turn it on me, though? No, I don't know. No, they'll probably clockwork orange you. Okay, I was going to do another movie, but I'm going to switch it up and do a TV show as well. And I'm going to go with The Walking Dead, mm. which is why I'm Carl. <laughs> Just my oh, okay. And the, okay, so I have, I used to really be into zombie stuff. I have, I think, I think there's 32 of the Walking Dead graphic novels and I have 27 of them and I've read them all. And when the show was coming out super pumped, I was like, oh, and AMC did it. And at the time, AMC was a little, little more of like a darker type network. So I was like, oh, good. AMC is going to do it and um, it's going to be great. And then the first two seasons, I was like, yeah, but then, but, but the then. Farm. The farm happened. Yeah, I I stopped watching it like a long time ago, and and now I know there's like two or three spinoffs, and I'm like, why is Maggie there? She's supposed to be dead. Like I don't know. I'm just like, what is happening? But I I would love to see a new Walking Dead show with like a a network that does like more adult stuff, take it over and have it all in black and white because I wanted it to be in black and white so bad because it mm. has that same feel as as the as the graphic novels and really Sin like City really style. gritty yeah I actually have that written down here yes comic book style slash Sin City um even if they want to add like the gore and the blood like different like like red and stuff that would have been kind of cool like more comic book style but extremely dark r-rated gritty gory graphic i would love that because it is and when they introduce negan i'm like that's not what negan looks like negan is not a tall skinny man he's this big huge like bruiser like buff guy and i was just like i'm done bye that's when i gave up when i saw negan i'm like eh. i'm sure he did a great job acting but hashtag not my negan he did do a great job. He actually was really good. He was one of the saving graces for a while of that of that show because he was so entertaining on screen as the I character. I couldn't shake his appearance. I just couldn't shape shake the look of him and how I couldn't I couldn't connect the two after reading the books and then being like, eh. Also, the governor, totally different like look. I was like, ah, what are you doing, guys? Anyway, that's, that's... I do that. Walking Dead. <laughs> That's a show that it's. I've got such a love hate for issue with because this show has just been so like up and down. Started off strong, then it went downhill. Then it picked up again for a couple of seasons. Then it went really downhill. Then it picked up again, and then you know some of the spinoff. Uh, you know, one spinoff was even better for most of it than the original show. But then you have another spinoff that was worse than all of it together. It's been all over the place with us. I have such a love-hate relationship with it. I wouldn't mind a reboot. Um, I don't know if we'll get it continue, considering the series they just spinoff just started. And then we have two more spinoffs yeah. in the way that are going to end the story. Um but I've always be down for, you know, zombie horror, like reboot or or reimagining of this. Um, but I think if they were to do it, I, I like the aesthetic aspects that you're throwing out there, Marie. Um, I feel they should stick with a six to eight episode format. The first season uh, really flourished in that six episode format. Once they started going to 14 they started overly stretching certain yeah. storylines that could have been solved in two episodes. They started taking mm -hmm. like eight episodes to do it. And that's when the show went downhill. So they were going to reboot it, keep it to six to eight, uh, nice, concise, move at a good pace. And I feel it can be another hit, even though we just had it recently. Um, mm -hmm. I, I stopped watching when they went to the farm, like, uh, 
I was watching a few episodes in. I was like, I'm out. It got boring to me. Um, I like a good, I love a really, really good zombie movie. The problem is that there's a lot of bland zombie stuff out there. And it's just, it's hard for me to see how you're going to have like a six, seven, eight season show about zombies. So you kind of have to complicate it. And that's why we say like The Last of Us, it's less about the monsters than it is about the characters and the dystopian future that they're in. That's more interesting to me. Maybe The Walking Dead is like that. I don't know. I'm not as versed on it, you know, with the lore of it. That's the approach they would have to take. But now if you reboot The Walking Dead, am I now comparing it to The Last of Us saying, well, now you're just copying The Last of Us? You know what I'm well, saying? I mean, Which they didn't because they pulled it from the material. But yeah, I mean, that's what Walking Dead ended up becoming. You know, the zombies stopped being a threat by like season mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. And it just became uh, about the humans being the biggest threat and then the zombies just being an obstacle. Uh, okay. So the zombies stopped being a threat a long time ago. Um, okay. They just needed to make the human aspect more compelling. Yeah, that's what it is. All right. So for my project, I was going to do a TV show called Sliders. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that with Jerry yes, O'Connell. That one was fun. But I'm going to yeah. talk about this movie because I think this movie was so close to being really really good but i still enjoy it because it's, there's a cheesiness to it but the movie butterfly effect <laughs> starting ashton kutcher okay i still go back and rewatch it but he was poorly cast for this role the concept is really really smart so you have this character that had like these blackouts throughout his life and he's able to in the movie he's able to just read a notebook that he wrote down the experience and he can kind of time travel mentally to the moment of his life and kind of alter it and alters the future Interesting concept, but it had a lot of cheesy moments. It had some very, very poor acting in certain key moments of this that it makes the movie ridiculous. Like, for instance, there's a scene where Hashin Kutcher has fake plastic arms and he's holding a granola bar and he's trying to eat it. And it's just fumbling out of his hands while he's trying to eat it. I can't take the movie seriously. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But the premise was interesting and it had that element of time jumping while altering the future that like there's stuff there the materials there you just have to redo it but better <laughs> get a better director revamp it a little bit make the story a little tighter so it doesn't sound so ridiculous don't give the guy plastic arms <laughs> and cast better <laughs> i actually had butterfly effect on my list here for the same reason because the premise it was good. It was a different take on time traveling. You know, there is mm -hmm. no machine or anything like that. It's this one individual's ability, and it's based off of, like, the memories of a journal, like you said. But I think the movie just went off the rails because it consequences started getting very ridiculous and were kind of unexplained. They were just like, hey, what's the weirdest crap we could throw in there as a consequence? But you as a viewer, you were like, how did they even how did that even get there from that decision? Like, how did that decision all of a sudden make her do that? Like there was no Amy smart is a crackhead prostitute now. Like yeah. what? Yeah. There was like no connection between the consequences and the decisions, the different decisions that we're making. And I think that's where it suffered because it kept pulling you out of the movie and out of that concept because you're having to try to find a solution in your head that the mm. movie isn't giving you. It's not giving you that, you know, that B through Y, and it expects you just to jump to Z. You didn't see it, did you? I did, but very long time ago. I don't remember. I was like a teenager or something. I don't remember it, like, at all. Go into your journal back to when you saw <laughs> yeah, it you and just travel back and, like, rewatch it. There you go. There you go. And you seen it you, you come back all of a sudden, like, Dan and I are a different gender. Because you went Dan's back and made one arms. wrong decision. No, Dan, Dan's gonna have plastic arms. That's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna make <laughs> yeah. it happen. I'll go back and I'm like, how are we gonna get Daniel plastic arms? That's about all I want to do. But the arms have to have those little tiny hands, you know, where one had to mm -hmm. grab things with yeah. them. You're like, how did that happen? Just because I ate an apple instead of an orange in the past. <laughs> all of a sudden, Jose is just a white female, like long, luxurious hair. With mechanical legs and one is a shotgun. <laughs> yeah. One's a shotgun. Yeah. I love it. Oh, okay. Man. All right. So what's one old favorite that should not be remade? Well, it, it's The Exorcist, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's got to be The Exorcist. And when I heard they were doing like what I thought was going to be a reboot, but it's actually a continuation, the new movie that's coming out, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but for me, it's always the first movie I think about because if you take The Exorcist and do it now, it's just going to be a whole bunch of CG thrown on top of it. And that totally ruins the beauty of what The Exorcist was. It was such a raw, gritty movie that didn't rely on that. And I feel like now it's like you can make any movie that's an exorcism movie and that's fine. But don't you dare throw the namesake, the exorcist on anything. I just don't think that should ever happen because that shouldn't be touched. It should be in like a little pristine, like little case and no one touches it. And if you want to just make an exorcism movie, you just go ahead and have all your people being thrown up against the walls and all the CG effects you want. But leave the exorcist alone forever, please. It's Please. too good. I doubled down on that. Please. I had a tough time choosing here. So I'm going to pull a Dan, and I'm going to throw two out there. Uh, <laughs> let me go with uh, Fifth Element. Yes. And uh, Face oh, yeah. Off. Don't, don't touch these two for two completely different reasons. Fifth Element, because it's just such a great sci-fi movie. Like, there's no way you're going to improve that. Or all you're risking is messing it up uh, in there. And we know we can't get Bruce Willis back in it either. So then you're you're losing that. Um, and then face off because you probably can make a better movie out of that. But I don't want you to make a better movie out of that because the badness is what makes face off what it is. So leave it in its bad, cheesy way. Don't touch it. Don't make it good. I'm I'm gonna do two real quick, okay? So the, wow, don't do. I can't believe you, cheater. <laughs> don't touch Jurassic Park. Stop. Yeah. Stop making sequels. Don't ever touch it again. Move the f on. I don't need to see it anymore because anything else you do, like the idea was already there, the premise was already there. You're done. Move on. What else can you possibly do with it? You can't, and you can't Nothing. out Spielberg Spielberg. So like, you can't reboot it or remake it. Like you're done. Cut off Jurassic Park. That's it. Here's another one for a very different reason. A TV show, Harry and the Hendersons. Not because the TV show was good, but because it was god awful and I don't need to see Sasquatch living with family. There's a show, Harry and the Hendersons? There's the movie, there's a show. There's a mo No, no, I think it was a TV show. No, I'm saying don't redo no. it as like a TV show or something like that. I don't need to see a oh, TV show okay. like cuz yeah. everything no, that they I reboot that is like a mini series or whatever it is. But we don't need to sit yeah. there and see it though. Yeah. I don't need to see a reboot version of that. It like just like the same reason that Jose said about Face Off. It existed in this little realm of like these early 90s or whatever this came out with John Lithgow where like it existed then and it was believable for us because we were all idiots. Now, I like to think we're a little smarter or maybe we're just more cynical, but we don't need to sit there and see Sasquatch like living with people. It's just no. <laughs> I don't need to see this remake. Maybe we do. I don't know. I'm going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I warmed up the idea more you talk about it. Like, maybe you do need to see a Sasquatch like with people. <laughs> yeah, I do. But like a dark version. Let's go. Like, why uh, not? <laughs> dark version for everything. Herald. Those hair balls. Herald and the Henderson. Yeah, Harold. Sophisticated. Oh, Dan, I, Dan, I, Dan, I know you said no sequel. But before you fully, like, commit to that, what if, we're just throwing this out there. What if you do a Jurassic Park, but it's a world of dinosaurs and they're bringing humans back in the theme park? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, Jose. I, you sold I haven't me. seen that before. <laughs> you sold me as soon as oh you said, God. what if I'm already sold? You got me. Jurassic Park <laughs> reimagining. I'm in, son. <laughs> just imagine a T-Rex cowering as just like a human comes like, <laughs> bouncing over <laughs> no i'm imagining i'm imagining some velociraptors and standing up in the glass coats on and glasses <laughs> they got some trapped in amber like a human fetus they're like oh my god oh or my like god. a sperm it's a sperm in amber or something and, and the oh random god. toenail for some reason <laughs> and then when they sit here and they bring us back who would be the worst carrot who would be the worst human they can possibly bring back for them or for us? Like, like uh, if you're sitting there watching this movie, you're like, oh, my God. Like, they they, they cloned this human, and, like, that's the DNA you took? Like, Melissa McCarthy? <laughs> <laughs> she's all, she's I thought you were going to say Josh Hartnett. 
<laughs> oh. Oh, Bradley Cooper. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I think for me, it'd probably be Amy Schumer. It's like, oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, good choice. Good choice. Yeah. yeah. Good choice. yeah I, good choice. I, I, I go with your choice now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Go on. Thank you for watching another episode of Not a Strong Start. You can like, comment, share, subscribe on our YouTube channel, Not a Strong Start. You can listen to us anywhere you listen to your podcast. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter and threads, Not a Strong Start. I'm your host, Fricky Dande. You can follow me at King underscore Sangre. What if you have a bunch of like children of the porns chasing the velociraptors through the field? Yeah, I'll get that. I am not your host, Make a Wish. And you can see me at <laughs> This Is Me Nombre on Instagram. Coral slash Walt. I don't know if my mic picked up. Walt. You can follow me and replays it all on Instagram and not on threads because I don't even know what that is. And like, what is it? I keep referring to it as stitches. <laughs> there you go. Snitches get stitches. What is this? Now I'm thinking Village of the Damned Kids using their superpowers against Charles Park. By golly, we got a reboot. What? I'm in. Right. I'm in. Hollywood, you know where to find us. Follow us on threads. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>